Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is sponsored by Experian Boost. You can get it right now at experian.com slash inside. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming for Monday. Oh, it's Monday, week started. We gotta give a good clap to everybody that got out of bed, went to work today. We did too, so let's get to it. The summer's almost over, oh, no clap for that. And if you're looking for some new games to play before the holiday season kicks off, there are a couple of good ones from well-regarded studios launching this week. We've got a supernatural sci-fi thriller called Control that's out tomorrow for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Yeah, nobody calls things thrillers anymore. I like oh. calling them thrilogies, because yeah. there's gonna be three of them. I hope so. Meanwhile, there's Astral Chain, a futuristic sci-fi game that's a Switch exclusive. That's a weird phrase to say. And it's out later this week. Some good news there. Reviews for both are looking pretty good. Hey! So, if you like sci-fi and you like options, there's two of them. Yeah. Claps for good Sorry, games, claps, claps for Mondays. Okay, let's talk about Control first. It's the bigger game, kind of, just in terms of budget, I think. And it's out tomorrow, so it's coming out first. It's in an 85 on Open Critic right now, and it's in the mid-80s on Metacritic, depending on the platform. The PC version got an 85, and the PlayStation 4 version is the lowest, bizarrely, at an 82. Ooh. That is not bad, right, Brian? That, those are good scores. Yeah. That's not shabby. It's mid-80s, so I don't think anybody hated it, but it's not Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it's not your God of War. In the game, you play as Jesse Faden. Is it Faden? Yeah. Yeah. So in the game, you play as Jesse Faden. I'm going to be Jesse Faden when I play this game. I'll tell you that. Don't do drugs, kids, unless it's legal in your state. So yes, he plays this character, Jess Faden, who shows up at a shadowy agency called the Federal Bureau of Control. You're looking for your younger brother who is kidnapped by the group. But then of course, things get really weird. Man, I'm just gonna say, if the Federal Bureau of Control takes somebody, they're gone. Don't go after them. Pretty quickly, Jesse becomes the director of the Bureau somehow, and it turns out the agency has been infiltrated by some sort of alien group known as the Hiss. I, I like, Yes, really. I like this idea, as I've been seeing the gameplay, I've been asking the question like, who are these people, what are they? But they've also already showed you you can't trust anything that's happening. Walls are changing, and there's a nebula in yeah. the sky when you're in a basement. I'm super into this stuff. It's super psychedelic and yeah. really out there. You know, Remedy, they did Alan Wake, and that game got pretty esoteric, we'll say. We love so, you, Sam Lake. The Hiss can possess people and turn them into creatures with supernatural abilities and obviously it's your job as Jesse to clean things up. What did Destructoid say about it? So Destructoid said the game could have been called Paranormal Activity if, you know, that had already not been taken. So I guess they had to go with Control. Except that this game doesn't look like a really boring low budget horror mostly told from really high oblique camera angles though, right? The movie cost $50,000. They, they made so much yeah. money. Take that independent creators. You. Boom, Jeez. boom, that's what you get for having dreams. <laughs> As time goes by, you acquire all sorts of powers, most notably some really cool kinetic abilities. And apparently the world is very Metrovania, as I've yeah. been told from the preview covers that I've been following. And you only get one gun that then upgrades and changes. It seems like it's creepy pasta the game, but with a budget. I've only recently been looking into this stuff, but it's SCP, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh no, that's absolutely it. Secure, control, and protect. It's the little alien guy with those little butt. That is the one, yeah, yeah. It's a new form of horror. Yeah, it's meme horror. It's very Lovecraftian inspired of like, it's too scary, you can't understand it. There's, there's a pizza box where every time you close it and open it, there's a new pizza inside. Yeah, Remedy said that SCP was actually a huge inspiration for this game, so I don't know, they got my money. I'm super into it. But more importantly, this game has a gun and you can shoot people. And you can hurl objects at people. Uh, yeah. And if, if, there, if there is nothing, you just pull concrete out of the ground and throw it at people. Sick, man, it's like You can fly around, yeah. flying's cool. On that point, lots of reviews praise the combat. Destructoid said that at first, the game feels like a standard shooter, but, quote, before long, Jessie has an arsenal of abilities that are more effective than her gun. Levitate, launch a desk at a cluster of enemies, evade their attacks, and finish them with a few bullets. This is the sort of tango that Control constantly facilitates. And unlike other games that ease you into the story, Control just immediately throws you into the mix. Oh yeah. At times being purposely vague about basic questions regarding the protagonist and the bureau she finds herself in. It, we call that the mystery box. Uh, J.J. Abrams did an entire talk on it where mm. you gotta put the question out there where you go, what of this? And then you wanna continue down the story. And it hooks you really early. We actually have a gameplay on Funhouse if you want to check it out. But on to some more reviews. Brian, what did GameSpot write about it? They were also kind of talking about that purposeful vagueness. They wrote that obfuscation is part of what makes control so spellbinding. Impressively, the mysteries grip ever tighter as you navigate the Bureau's headquarters in search of answers. Knowledge is power, but it frequently opens doors to possibilities you never knew existed, doors that are better left shut. Dun, dun, dun. dun. Polygon called it one of the year's best and weirdest games, saying Excellent. Remedy knows how to create an elaborate, internally consistent world, perhaps better than any other developer, and its ability to do so with a light dusting of sparse details mixed with the courage to withhold answers for an uncon... <laughs> uncomfortably long sentence for an uncomfortably <laughs> long time is one of its best tricks. I do like it when uh, game reviewers get out the quill and the inkwell mm -hmm. and really scribe a sentence. Right? Come on, diploma. <laughs> is that courageous to withhold answers? Yes, that's, that's, oh, that's kind of what's funny. Oh, it's so brave of them yeah. to not tell you the story. <laughs> we will rate the game a B for brave. 
So this is what I'm really excited about. I just sunk a lot of money into my PC for this game. It also has ray tracing. Yay. Yeah. But to get the full effect, you'll need a good PC, which I now have yeah. after reinstalling Windows and buying a new power supply. And a graphics card that's up to the task, which I also have is now. It but running over 20 frames? Is it? Is yeah. It well, I don't. I haven't played Control yet, but it better. But uh, it wasn't all good news, right, Brian? Some critics felt like the dialogue could be rigid. Not everybody liked the Metroidvania adventuring. And then some said that the facial animations could be sloppy, sometimes even getting into uncanny valley territory. Yeah, The Verge wrote that while Control might be tedious at times, it's worth experiencing for the atmosphere alone. It's the kind of place that feels both alien and mundane, and it becomes richer and more compelling the further you delve into it. That's probably what a good video game should do. I guess I get what they mean, because you're in like a, a very austere sort of office building, but then yeah, there's like alien dudes flying around and slamming into the walls. And then you go into these like trippy deep dives into some alternate parallel dimension stuff. Super down, can't wait to play. Yep, coming out this week, so hey yo. Moving on, we got Astral Chain. It's out this Friday, currently sitting at an 88 on Metacritic and an 87 on Open Critic. That's actually higher than Control, wow. which is wild. Those are pretty solid scores, and it makes a nice one-two punch for the Switch just about a month after the release of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah, the Switch needs exclusives to keep its momentum going, and it seems like Astral Chain is just what the doctor ordered, which is to say a weapons-grade dose of anime. I love it. My insurance doesn't cover that sort of doctor, but he sounds cool. <laughs> I'm Dr. Anime. Uh, tell us you more. You need bigger tits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this show's written by men. Uh, tell us more about the, the the game, Brian. It's a pretty standard sci-fi anime plot. We're about 60 years into the future, and the Earth has become inhabitable, so humanity has been migrated to a new habitat called the Ark. And, of course, your new home is under attack by a group of interdimensional baddies called the Chimeras. Isn't that the I way? Think, is it Chimeras or Chimeras? Chimeras? The Chimera. He's from Texas. I, to say. He plays a futuristic cop from the Neuron Special Task Force. I can be Dr. Future Anime Cop? You sure can be whatever you want, little boy. You need cyber big titties. Either way, it's your job to investigate the chimera activity, rescue civilians, and of course, kick some alien ass. Yeah, you gotta kick ass at some point. As Kotaku put it, quote, it's an anime style game with an anime premise and anime quality writing. That's not necessarily a bad thing. No. But it usually is a very bad thing. To beat up the chimeras, you got a little robot buddy known as Legion, who you're connected to by something called the Astral Chain, hence ah. the name of the video game. God bless. Uh, you'll be able to summon that Legion who can attack automatically in AI mode, or you can enlist a second player to take control. So that allows you to pull off some cool combos. Kotaku wrote that quote, if my legion and I are placed correctly, we can lariat certain charging enemies with a chain, sending them flying as if launched by a slingshot. It's fast and frantic and highly enjoyable. You'll be able to get multiple legions as the game progresses and customize them any way you like, whatever you want to do. I want a legion I can have sex with. Can't do you got that. it. I mean, yes, you got it. There's also a ton of emphasis on investigation and exploring. You are a cop after all. Anime mysteries, that's good. Where did the titties go? We got to find them. Tell us more where they went, bro. Well, Destructoid said you'll be roaming around the city a lot. You'll be doing a lot of optional side quests. Of course you will. Some of these involve busy work like arresting drug dealers or talking to citizens. Arresting drug dealers doesn't sound like busy work. Anyway. The rewards are on point and the optional nature of it allows you to get down to business if you really want, like riding your big titty legion. Whoa. Mm. All in all, though, critics like the unique mechanic of fighting alongside a robot partner and a healthy dose of anime craziness. I called Astral Chain, quote, one of the best action games of this generation, period. Fighting off alien invaders with a legion robot by your side proves to be even more fun than it looks, which is saying a lot. And it's worth noting that both of these games came from respected developers. Controls from Remedy Entertainment, the studio best known for games like Alan Wake and Quantum Break, let's not forget the original Max Payne, one and two. Remedy is known for really cinematic games with a strong central character, and Control definitely follows that tradition. Yeah, it's good to see them still still plunging down that path, even though we seem to be in an era where strong, story-driven, single-player games aren't quite the hottest property. No, God, no. So God bless Remedy for really pushing forward there. Meanwhile, Astral Chain is the latest effort from Platinum Games, which is known for stylish action games like the Bayonetta series, as well as Nier Automata, which got tons of accolades back in 2017. To my intense gamer shame, I haven't beaten Nier Automata yet, but I need to. Oh, it's so f***ing good, dude. Isn't there like anime. There's like 62 endings in that game, right? Yeah, it is. It's, it's insane. Despite having that premise, everyone says that like it's not a problem at all. You actually want to keep playing. So I'm in. Okay. That. Platinum's also had a history of collaborating with Nintendo, making Star Fox Zero and the Wonderful 101, yeah. as well as Bayonetta 2 for the Wii U. They might have set a record for the most Wii U games developed for a non Nintendo company. That so. may actually actually, in fact, be true. <laughs> they were also behind Scalebound, the game where you got to like wear cool Zune headphones and beat up things with a dinosaur buddy that was infamously canceled a few years ago. Ouch. Actually, very, very strange that Platinum Games didn't finish a game. I'll always remember this. Konami was doing Metal Gear Rising for years and just couldn't get it done. And then they gave it to Platinum and it shipped in like a year. So I don't know how Scalebound fell apart. How'd you 
the Dragon game. Two games for you to go into Labor Day weekend. Should be plenty of good gaming all around. Maybe I'll actually get around to finishing Nier Automata. Yeah, this is actually typically a thing that happens, I think, in the gaming industry where all the big games, the heavy hitters, always come out towards the end of the year, sort of like around holiday. But there's always these fun little gems that come out every once in a while. There's always like your Ninja Gaiden or something that's oh, yeah. like just a fun little game to play over the summer. So I'm actually happy for these sorts of things. And my money's definitely on control, but Astro Chain looks pretty rad too. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Everything's getting used this weekend. Got the PC, got the Switch. That's about it, actually. All right, gamers, the time is here. Ray tracing, we all need it, but it's $10,000. How are we gonna afford that? You gotta keep feeding $20 bills into the coin slot on the front of your PC. You're gonna run out of money. So it turns out you need good credit to finance that video card so you can see those ray tracings in control. And what can help you do that? A good credit score. What can help you get a good credit score? Experian Boost Bang. Experian Boost is the one service for gamers the worldwide. I did it. So you should use Experian Boost, basically is what I'm saying. Uh, the better your credit score, obviously, the easier it is to get the stuff you want. It means you don't have to put a deposit on like a cell phone. It means you can get low rates on like mortgages and loans and stuff like that, which you're gonna need if you wanna buy that $20,000 video card, get those rays traced in your games. Uh, Experian Boost can help you do that. Uh, essentially, it, it basically uses the things that you already do, the ways that you're already responsible about money, like paying your utilities on time, paying your cell phone bills on time. Those are things that aren't typically included with, uh, with credit reports, but Experian Boost can find those things and use them to boost your credit score. Uh, it used to take months to see credit, your credit score rise a point or two with Experian Boost. You can see your credit scores instantly rise. Boost is free and only available from Experian. Experian Boost can potentially help you establish or increase your access to credit. Available instantly for free, like I keep saying, uh, for FICO scores. Uh, Boost is only available at Experian.com slash inside if you want to try and get that good loan. Take a loan out on your house to get that video card. That's E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N.com slash inside to boost your FICO credit score today. Thank you, Experian Boost, and thank you for making smart financial decisions to make sure you can see ray tracing and control out tomorrow. Review roundups. Let's the the most the highest performing inside gaming daily will ever do. We can do it if maybe we throw in some hot takes. Ooh, oh, I don't. I have none. I don't think Astro Chain's very good. <gasps> I think it's great. Oh. Is that a running hot run up. Oh. Did I do it? Maybe. Well, did I do it? If you're in the mood to go visit a hellscape blow up weird mutant creatures, well, we got a video game for you. It's called Florida! Boom! Got him, but much like Florida, something might be a little rotten in the state of game reviews here. Yeah, Lawrence has a little chip on his old shoulder regarding Rage 2 score.